Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. Today we're gonna to talk about the Google Pixel 6 Pro and its Jory Visor camera cluster. Uh, so that's the first thing that I thought of when I saw it. And so I have a lot of Google phones here on the table. I have really liked the Google Pixel. Uh, I got the first Pixel. I actually had the Google Nexus back in the early days of Android. And I've enjoyed Android throughout the process, even though I primarily end up using an iPhone a lot of the time. But when the Pixel 2 came out and Google really stepped it up in the software end of photography with all of the things that they were doing to just make amazing pictures come out of a smartphone back with the Pixel 2. I really loved that phone and felt that Google was onto something and that they were maybe going to be the leaders in photography in these cameras on these smartphones. But the years following that phone, Google kind of backslid a bit. While they were still doing some really interesting things with software, the technology was not that great. You know, we had um, the Pixel 3 was okay. It was a little bit better, but not much. We had the Pixel 4, which was kind of a disappointment because it didn't really have anything as far as telephoto went. We had the Pixel 5, which really was just like a double down on the Pixel 4, trying to keep the phone inexpensive. And they got away from building something that people actually wanted to use as an alternative to the other devices that were out there. Now the Pixel 6 is confusing to me. This Pixel 6, of course the design is different and I get like, there were some things solved here in this form factor that I, I do like and I'll talk about that here in a second. But it is a very confusing phone to use, especially if you're a person like me and you've used a lot of different smartphones. I have all these Google phones, I have, have other Google phones, I've just gotten rid of some of them over time. I also have the S21 Ultra here, and I have you know the Note. I've got previous years of Android, different Android smartphones, and what this phone feels like to me is a collection of all of the things that most of these other companies were touting, like the round edges that are very much a Samsung kind of thing on this phone. You either love or you hate the round edges. For me personally, I'm not a huge fan of them because when I'm trying to single hold my phone with one hand, um, it becomes a little bit tricky to reach things at the top corner without accidentally tapping somewhere else on your phone. And so the rounded edges, while maybe they make it feel like you're a little bit more immersed if you're viewing uh, content full screen on the phone, I don't know, it's just, it's not the best experience and I end up going with a case that will add to the phone so that I could better grip the phone. I have always had to do that on the Samsung Galaxy phones, have something that adds to the grippiness of the phone so I can use the phone without feeling like I'm going to drop it. So there's that. The back camera bump I do like because if we're gonna have a camera bump on the phone, I would rather my phone sit flat. And whether or not I have the case on this phone or not, when I set the phone down, it sits flat. Previous versions of the phone rock side to side. They're not sitting flat. The iPhone rocks, it doesn't sit flat. The Galaxy phone with its very large camera cluster on the back does not sit flat. It rocks on the table and so you end up having to go with a pretty thick case to compensate for that so that your phone does not sit there and wobble, which I don't know, to me is just a big deal. I don't know if it's a big deal to you or not, but to me it is. So there are nice things about this phone. It has 120 hertz refresh rate that is that variable. So it's saving battery when you don't need that high refresh rate, that's great. You know, we've got a higher refresh rate now on the Pixel phone. You know, we've, we've got a bigger screen size, which is great. You know, Pixel, they used to have kind of a different, couple different size variations. Um, and now they've got the Pixel, six, they've got the Pixel 6 Pro, the two different size variations. And uh, so, you know, that's nice, a bigger phone. I do like a bigger phone, especially being that I use it not only just for media consumption, but for photography. And I like to do some photo editing when I'm on the go on my phones as well. And so the bigger screen is definitely great for that. Uh, the, the more performance with the uh, 12 gigs of RAM and, uh, you know, up to 512 gigs of storage is great. You know, Google has tried to give us less storage so that we have to rely on cloud storage. You know, uh, different devices have done that in the past. And I feel like we're finally getting that uh, local storage back 
on our devices because we're not ready to just completely live in the cloud. We want some local storage. So having up to 512 gigs of storage is a great uh, option, and I think for most people you're not really going to run out of that amount of space. Um, so overall, I mean, the phone feels great. Uh, Android 12 is nice. I've been using the beta on a couple of my other devices for a little while, and so I've gotten accustomed to some of the changes. I feel like Android has borrowed things that Samsung has kind of baked into their, oh, their UI over the last few years uh, while keeping it Google at the same time. And so we have a pretty good overall UI experience. It's very snappy. And so, you know, those are the things uh, that I have to say about the phone itself as a phone. Um, I am running dual SIM on this phone, which is fantastic. I have two lines on this phone, both a Verizon line and a Google Fi line, which is great to be able to run dual SIM on this phone. And actually, I love the Android experience uh, of dual SIM on this more than I like the dual SIM experience on a lot of other smartphones, including the iPhone. And so dual SIM, you could see here if I swipe down, I've got Verizon and I also have Google Fi. And uh, it's nice to be able to have those dual SIMs on the phone. It was a simple process to set up. So let's talk about the cameras. Now the cameras I highly anticipated because all of the leaks Everybody was talking about the fact that maybe Google is getting back to caring about the hardware of their devices and giving us something that is leading edge. And so naturally, the first thing I wanted to do was go and take some pictures and compare this phone to my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and then also compare some of the photos with uh, photos that I've taken on the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Because we do have three cameras on the back of this phone, three cameras including one using that kind of weird telescope technology or, uh, you know, where the camera is mounted sideways and then um, there's a, a mirror that projects uh, the image in into the camera and so they get that you get that additional telephoto uh, and you could probably have a bigger sensor as well. So in my experiences with taking pictures with this phone, I was pretty impressed. There were some things that were a little weird to me that may or may not be deal breakers. I really need to experience them in a few more different scenarios to see if it's going to be a long-term problem. But overall, I've been pretty impressed with the camera on this phone. The first picture that I took uh, with this phone was outside, kind of on my way back. I, you know, got the phone set up and drove the rest of the way home from where I get my mail. And uh, I was taking a few pictures. And one thing that I did notice is the blues in the sky were pretty... I don't know, maybe a little bit over the top. Now that's something that I've been very familiar with Samsung phones doing, and most of us who have had a Samsung phone before know that the sky can sometimes be a little over the top. And so that was the first thing that I noticed is that the blues of the sky were not natural. It was not a rep good representation of what I was looking at. And phones tend to do that. And I think that this phone is taking some of those colors and emphasizing them to make the photo look a little bit better than maybe what your eyes were seeing at the time. And so I did notice that in this camera. Uh, I took, uh, I usually take a photo of the American flag that we have hanging outside of our house. And there was good detail in that. The wind was moving it around a little bit and it did a great job of freezing that action even though it was later in the day. I also enabled raw shooting mode and so you can shoot both raw and JPEG images on this phone which is great and so I started shooting some and getting both the raw and the JPEG and I, I'm pretty impressed with the sharpness and the clarity of these images. Um, one of the things that I know that Google had done early on was kind of fake a depth of field with the photos by blurring the edges of things so that it looks like the background is out of focus like you would get with a higher end camera. You can't do shallow depth of field on phones like this with the lenses that they have because you don't have enough lens technology there in order to get that fall off, that shallow depth of field, and you can't, it's not, a, uh, the aperture on these devices don't adjust, there's no variable aperture, so you you can't open up that aperture really wide, which also contributes to getting that shallow depth of field. 
And so Google was faking it, and a lot of cameras, uh, a lot of smartphone cameras were figuring out ways to fake that shallow depth of field. However, uh, whether it's faking it or not, it looks pretty good. They used to be able to see the edit line almost where the filter started to blur uh, on the edges of your image. But if you're looking at this image of these of the flowers in this flower pot here, there's uh, sharp aspects of the image and then the focus fall off is really not that bad. It looks pretty good. Um, I then took a picture of our dog, both with this phone and also with the iPhone. And the interesting thing is that the detail in the Pixel 6 Pro was superior by far, I'd say, to the detail that was in the iPhone. And so that's what really surprised me is I've been kind of, you know, happy with the detail that I've been getting out of the iPhone, especially the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And you can see here as I zoom in, I mean, this image, um, this is the image that I took, just, just a random photo. But if I zoom in super close here, I mean, we've got a lot of detail and I really noticed that I need to give my dog a bath, but uh, there's a lot of sharpness and detail in this image, and I was really impressed in the image capture. That sharpness and detail was not there on the iPhone 13. It was, uh, of course, still a pretty sharp image, but if you zoom in that close, you, can, you definitely lose all of that clarity. Uh, one image that was of a little bit of a concern to me was when I started taking pictures, this picture's from the iPhone, so this is an iPhone photo. I'm, these photos are backed up to Google Photos, so I have both iPhone photos and Pixel photos here. So this is the iPhone photo that I captured of this little pot, clay pot here with two candles. And so you can see that. This is the picture that the Pixel captured. And you can see it's got something weird going on with the light that is coming off of the candle that definitely ruined this image. Uh, while if I zoom in and look at the Stone Creek Farm logo here, that's really sharp. I could even go back to the iPhone photo version here and zoom in, and it's not as sharp. I mean, it still looks pretty clear, but you can see the softness in the letters that uh, was not apparent when you zoom in here. You can see this is a lot better looking, but the problem with this image here being whatever is happening with this flare that's coming off of the the light, which I don't know, that may be a deal breaker if every time I take a picture uh, where there's some sort of light or in a lower light situation, something weird like that happens. Um, later on with night sight, you know, I took a picture of this airplane and when I zoom in and look at the details, I mean, I'm zoomed in pretty far here and there's still some good detail in the airplane, whereas if I go, and uh, the iPhone photo didn't back up to here, but there is an iPhone version that I took as well, and the iPhone photo is not as clear. And so I feel like Google really is doing a bit better of a job with Night Sight combined with maybe their lens technology is capturing a little bit more sharpness. And so these initial tests really kind of excited me for the potential of this phone. Uh, with the caveat that maybe there's some issues there when you're taking pictures of things with light or bright light because of that flare that came off. Now that was using, that wasn't even using the telephoto lens. Um, that was just using the, um, the standard lens. I think I was at, um, I was at the 2X mode. And so I wasn't even in the telephoto lens at the 4X mode. I was just in the 2X mode and I had that problem. I did try it again at the 4X mode and had the same problem. So I don't know if that's something that could be fixed as software or if that's a lens design issue, something that they're having problems with that might be a defect in the camera itself because that didn't exist on the iPhone. It also didn't exist on the Galaxy phone that I took the same exact picture with. So. I don't know, but what I do know is that this phone takes sharper images than the other cameras. And so if image clarity and sharpness is what you're going for, I really think that Google's done a good job with the Pixel 6 Pro. The camera does a great job capturing images. It just, for whatever reason, had that one instance um, where I couldn't get that flare to go away. So I don't know. Maybe that's uh, something that's just happening to my phone. Maybe it's something that's happening to everybody's phone. If you experience that problem, definitely share down in the comment section below 
so that uh, I know that my phone's not the only one with that issue. But overall, I think for the price, Google has done a really good job of pricing this device. It is cheaper than most other flagship phones, Samsung and, uh, and Apple's flagship phones. And so I think the price is, is really positioned well. Uh, the design, albeit a little bit different than what we're used to seeing, is fine. I like it because the cameras are spread out. Uh, the camera bump is not going to make the phone sit weird on the table and rock. And um, it's also high enough up on the back of the phone that it isn't in the way. Whereas uh, when using the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra here without a case on it, that camera bump was always where I wanted my finger to be. And so, I, I don't know, I think Google may have nailed it with the design, even though it is a little weird looking and it definitely makes me think of the Jordi Visor. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this phone. So if you're considering this phone, I think it's definitely one of the better phones that are out on the market right now, especially with the camera. Its sharpness can't be beat and it has the telephoto features that we want in a pro camera, has the ability to capture raw images, and so I think that Google will just continue to improve upon it. While the sharpness of the image can be emphasized in software, it really can't go beyond the capabilities of the hardware. And so I think Google has done a great job with with that. I think that you would really like this phone if you decided to go with it. So I've got links to the phone down in the description below. Make sure to check that out. If you have any questions or thoughts, definitely share them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and click that thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Take care.